Okay, everyone. So now that we have seen where uh, the different crossovers come from, let me show you a quick way to just, uh, well, quickly derive the different genotypes in each class. So given an individual with uh, this genotype and this arrangement of alleles, now keep in mind that this is the arrangement of the alleles on the different chromosomes. So the big A, big B, big D on one chromosome, little a, little b, little d on the other chromosome. Now, to get the non-crossover class, so no crossovers between any of the intervals linking these genes, well, you simply just list these. A, B, D, little a, little b, little d. Okay, so this is the non-crossover class, or these genotypes make up the non-crossover class. Now, to get the single crossover class, or one of the single crossover class classes, what I like to do, this is my anchor up here. So I like to anchor this A in place. So all of my, all of the the methods I use to derive the various crossover classes will involve sort of anchoring this in place. So I'm going to assume the crossover is going to occur right here between A, genes A and B. If that's the case, little b and little d need to move up, big B and big D need to move down. So let's do that. Big A, little b and little d move up to join big A, that's one gamete, big B and big D move down to join the other, uh, to join little a to make the other gamete. So this is a single crossover class. And I'll, you know what, I'll call it one. Doesn't matter if I call it one, I could call it a, I could name this one two, uh, but it's one of the single crossover classes. Now the next class. So this is the original arrangement of alleles in the parent. What I'm going to do, here's the, the interval we're looking at for the second crossover, the intervals between B and D. So D is gonna move up and big D, little D is gonna move up, big D is going to move down. Little D up and big D down. Now double crossover. This is easy. So here's the arrangement in uh, the parent or whatever. So the double crossover involves a crossover in both intervals. So essentially what we need to do is just move the middle one, the, this little b up and big b down. So we're just flipping the alleles that are in the middle. Big A, little b, big D, and little a, big b, little d. So this is the double crossover class. Two gametes, and you can see that all uh, in each class there are two genotypes, and the genotypes are reciprocals of each other. So what do we want to go over next? Um, let me just go over briefly a shorthand notation system that you will see in some of the chapter problems. So I've been using something like this. Now this is also equivalent to this. So in, in this system right here, I'm just assuming like big A, big B, and big D are wild type alleles. You know, I didn't use the wild type notation, but I'm just assuming they're wild type. And these are the mutant alleles, and they're all recessive to the wild type allele. If these are wild type alleles, well then why, why don't I use this system right here? So in this case, the wild type alleles are dominant 
to the uh, mutant alleles. And then I could take this one step further, and instead of putting A+, plus, B+, plus, and C+, plus, I can just use plus. So instead of A+, plus, I use a plus for the A plus allele, a plus for the B plus allele, and a plus for the C plus allele. And because I've positioned these directly above the recessive version of each allele, I know this is for A plus, and I know this is for B plus, and so on and so forth. So if I were to ask you a question, um, given three genes, gene A, gene B, and gene D, if this is the genotype of a gamete, what is the reciprocal genotype? Well, then you could say little a, little b, plus. That would be the reciprocal. Okay, so I think that's pretty straightforward. Now, we have a problem that we went over in class. It is, let me see if I can find the number. I think it's 5.13. So in 5.13, we are looking at a female Drosophila with this genotype. for three genes, gene D, gene B, and gene C. Now this is the arrangement of alleles in the female Drosophila, and what does that mean? Well, we'll take this chromosome here, diagram the homologous chromosome, and if this is the tetrad during meiosis, well, we've got D, B, and plus over here, and plus, plus, and C over there. So this is the arrangement of alleles on one chromosome, and this is the arrangement of alleles on the homologous chromosome. Now, this is going to form a bunch of different gametes, and I'm going to list the gametes here and I'm going to give each gamete a number, and I'm numbering them the same way that the problem numbers them in the optional textbook. So this is the genotype of one gamete, gamete number one. So they're not in any particular order. What we're going to need to do is determine which one, which two are the result of no crossover, which two are the result of a single crossover between D and B, and which two are the result of a single crossover between B and C. Now, see if you can do that. Determine which two go in the non-crossover class, which two go in the one of the single crossover classes, the other two will go in, uh, which other two will go in the other single crossover class, and which two will go in the double crossover class. And so the only thing you really need to do to answer this question, or you only need, is this thing, this, this genotype right here. And so if you went to lecture today, you know that when, we come, when it comes to the three-point cross, we don't know which gene is in the middle. So the question tells you that, okay, this order is correct. B is in the middle. This arrangement is correct. We just need to derive these classes. So take a moment to do that. You can pause the video and uh, try to answer it on your own and then unpause the video and, and you can watch me do it. So the non-crossover class essentially is assuming no crossovers between any of these, either of these intervals. As a result, 
d, b, and plus, without any changing, changing in the alleles here, should be one genotype. Plus plus c should be the other genotype. So we have the two genotypes of the gametes in the non-crossover class. So those numbers are db plus, number four, and plus plus c, number three. Okay, now how about the single crossover class? Like I said, I'm gonna anchor this here, and I'm gonna flip up the plus and the c, and move down the b and the plus. So I'm gonna get d plus c, these here, plus and C are moving up. B and plus are moving down to join that one. So one gamete genotype is D plus C. The other one is plus B plus. We can check that we're, um, we didn't make any mistakes by making sure that these are reciprocal genotypes. So let's look over here, find the numbers number seven and number eight. Okay, so the other crossover class, we already determined the crossover class that results from a crossover, crossover between D and B. What about a crossover between B and C? Okay, remember the way I like to do this, anchor this here, crossover here, so flip C up and plus down, that is gonna give us D, B, and C together and plus, plus, plus together. And uh, finally, the double, oh, let's find the numbers. One and two. Now for the double crossover class, what we need to do is just flip the one in the middle. So B is gonna come down here to join C, plus is gonna go up here to join D. So D plus, plus, plus B, C. Five and six. Okay, so we derived the various classes, found the right numbers here, and this is the answer to that question. Now there's one more part to this question, and to answer the next part, we need to know that gene D is closer to gene B than B is to C. And with this information, we can predict which of these gamete classes will be found uh, most frequently, and second most frequently, and third most frequently, and least frequent. So the first, first off, what we need to know is that the non-crossover class will always be found in the highest number. So why is that the, case, uh, that the case? So one thing you can consider is that, remember when we were deriving the various genotypes resulting from a crossover, So we always had two of these chromatids that were, they were not involved, no matter when, whether we had a crossover between interval one, crossover between interval two, or a double crossover, or no crossover, we, there were always at least two chromatids that there were the result of no crossing over. So non-crossover gametes are always gonna be found in the highest number, because we're always forming them, whether there are, is a crossover or not. Some of the gametes that come out of that tetrad are going to be considered non-crossover gametes. So NCOs are always found in the highest number. So uh, four and three, the NCOs will be found in the highest frequency. So what comes next? Well, you know what? Let's do the least frequent. So the least frequent gamete class are gonna be uh, those 
or it's gonna be the double crossover class. So double crossovers are always less frequent than the single crossovers. Why is that? Because in order for a double crossover to occur, we need to have both single crossovers occurring at the same time in the same tetrad. So we need to get one forming here and one forming here. And the odds of that are equal to the odds of this one times the odds of that one. So they're always going to be lower than either single crossover occurring alone. It is, I think I have an analogy in the notes about some pants and some shirts and the odds of picking a pants of this color and, and a shirt of that color on any given day. Um, essentially, if you need two things to occur and there's a certain probability that one event is going to, going to occur and a certain probability that the other event is going to occur, the probability that they both occur is always going to be lower than the probability of each single event occurring alone. Double crossovers are always going to be found in the lowest frequency. So we're putting that 5 and 6 way over here. So now we need to determine the single crossover classes. How can we determine whether 7 and 8 are more frequent than 1 and 2, or 1 and 2 are more frequent than 7 and 8? Now, what we do is we look at the distance between genes D and B and uh, B and C. So the greater the distance here, the greater the genetic distance, the more recombination, the greater the genetic distance, the more likely we are to get a crossover between um, that interval represented by the genetic distance. So B and C is represented by a, a greater genetic distance than the interval uh, between D and B. So we're more likely to see a crossover occurring here than we are here. So the genotypes that result from a crossover between B and C are more likely or, or going to be more frequent than the genotypes that result from a crossover between D and B. So what are the genotypes that result from a crossover between B and C? We can go up here again. So put the anchor here, crossover here. That means C moves up plus moves down. So let's find here, C moves up plus moves down. So seven and eight. No, that's not right. C moves up to join D and B plus moves down to join the pluses. So it's going to be this one right here, one and two. So D, B, and C, and plus, plus, plus. So one and two are going to go here. Seven and eight are going to go here. Okay, so this is the, the order, um, the frequency, I should say, uh, yeah, yeah, the decreasing order of frequency of the different gamete classes. NCOs here, this, single crossover class is found here. This one represents the second most frequent gametes. And this one down here is the least frequent, uh, less frequently formed gametes, least frequently formed gametes. Okay, so uh, I think you understand, I hope you understand that question. Also, I have that typed up in the notes so you can um, see it with color figures and diagrams and things like that. It might help you understand it a little bit better if you are still confused on how we derived um, the relative frequency of each gamete class there.